Welcome back, this is Professor Xiao Ma. In this video, I will demonstrate and explain a specific hands-on problem. Now keep in mind that in demonstrating the hands-on problem, I will use an example data set, which is default one. When you do the homework, the data set is different. So make sure that you adapt the code to work with the homework. In the video, I assume that whatever Python package that we will be using, you have already installed them. If you realize that you haven't installed a specific package and you need to install it in the middle of the video, simply pause the video and go ahead and install it. Install the Python package by following the tutorials that I uploaded. Now let's get started. After importing the data set, let's do a few sanity checks to understand the data. Now here, I mainly looked at the number of rows and number of columns and the specific target variable, target, which records whether or not a customer defaulted. So it's a binary variable. Now let's go through the steps. The first thing to do is to make a list of labels that you will apply Z standardization. Here I will use the column paid underscore five to demonstrate. Now I have a list that has only one element, which is the column label of that column. Now the next step is to create a scalar here. For this standardization, the scalar is called standard scalar. I will create a scalar object. And then I will use the fit transform method to apply on the columns that I need to apply Z standardization. Now, the critical argument to feed into the fit transform method is the column or columns that I need to apply Z standardization. Here it's only one column. By using the list of labels of the columns that I created earlier, I can conveniently feed in the portion of the data set, the columns of the data frame for Zscaler. I don't have to specifically spell out the column name here because I have already defined it and put it into a list. Now run this. So I have put the Z standardized values of the variable to Z paid five. And keep in mind that this is a NumPy array. I need to move or copy these values into the main data set, the DF default. And in doing that, I don't want to replace the original values because the two columns are still different. One is the original raw data. The other is the transform data. So a better way here is to create a new column and to put the values of the Z standardized values into that new column. And here is the way to do that. I assign the transform values into a column, which is called Z paid five in the data frame. And the data frame currently doesn't have this column. So by using this notation, I am creating a new column with this new name. And I, I'm also assigning the values of the standardized variable into the new column. Afterwards, I believe the new column is ready inside the data frame and it includes the Z standardized value of paid underscore five. And it's always a good idea and a good practice to double check the new column. I'm going to print the summary statistics of that new column to verify that it's a Z standardized column. A Z standardized column should have a mean zero and standard deviation of one. And let's check. So I'm using describe function to print the descriptive statistics of that column, which is a series. And I use round three to round off the excessive number of decimals. And let's run it. Now it's confirmed mean is negative zero, which is zero. It may be a very small decimal. It's, it's very close to zero. It cannot be exactly zero, but as long as it's very close to zero, it's fine. Standard deviation is 1.001, very close to one. Good job. And the other statistics, they look fine. Okay, so the job is done. This demo has successfully standardized using Z-score standardization, the column, which is named paid underscore five and it has stored the Z standardized values as a new column in the data frame. The steps for min max normalization or range normalization is similar. I will first create a list of labels to apply the normalization. 
I rename the list a little bit differently to reflect the method. It's min max normalization. Now I use a column credit limit to demonstrate. So after that, I need to define a new scalar object. Now here for range normalization, the scalar is a little bit different. It's called min max scalar. I'll copy the code here. I will run it. I named that object min max norm mmn scalar. Afterwards, again, I will use the fit transform method to do the transformation. I will feed the specific portion of the data frame, which is only one column of the data frame to the fit transform method. And as a return, I will get the output of the transformed values. And this time it's the min max transformation. I will run it. And finally, I will assign the output to a new column. As is shown here, I'm creating a new column for the data frame. I'm referring to this column. This column has not been created. It, it doesn't exist yet before I run the code. But by assigning the transform value to that column, it essentially creates a new column and copies the values of the transformed result. And finally, it's always a good idea to do some sanity check about the values. Now this time, the normalization, it's supposed to bound all the values uh, into the range between 0 and 1. So I should see the min and max to be 0 and 1. And take a look. So now the mean is not 0, but the mean is somewhere between 0 and 1. That is reasonable. Standard deviation is below 1 as well. And the mean is 0, max is 1. This means that the mean max normalization has been successful. The demonstration is completed. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you next time.